Hello, so this video will go over the first section of chapter 10, and chapter 10 is on nuclear chemistry. So nuclear uh, reactions are a different kind of reactions than what we've learned thus far. Um, up to now, uh, the reactions we learned involved uh, the valence electrons of atoms. Uh, bonds were broken and uh, new bonds were formed, but this involved only the valence electrons of the elements. Their uh, nucleus didn't change. The identity of the elements didn't change. Uh, in chapter 10, uh, we turn our attention to nuclear reactions, and in these reactions, the nucleus of the atoms change. Um, so there is a, a wide range of applications for nuclear chemistry, like um, in medicine, it is used to diagnose a disease, visualize organs, or treat tumors. Uh, it is also used to generate uh, energy in nuclear power plants. Uh, it's also used to date archaeological objects using the isotope carbon-14. Um, even uh, simple uh, smoke detectors are also using radioactivity. So this is also an important uh, concept to understand. So before we um, move to um, radioactivity, let's go over a review of what are isotopes. So um, isotopes are atoms of the same element that have a different number of neutrons. And because of that, they will have different masses. So they have the same element symbol, but they have a different num number of neutrons. So that will give them different masses. For example, um, carbon-12, here is the carbon with the um, mass number 12. So it is written in the upper uh, left corner. And the atomic number is written in the lower left corner. And so carbon is um, atomic number six. So six is at the bottom, and 12 is the mass number here. So this is the one way to write um, an isotope and give its mass number. The mass number allows you to get the number of neutrons because you do the mass number minus the number of protons. And remember how the number of protons is the atomic number. So you do the top number minus the bottom number and you get the number of neutrons for that particular isotope. So here, carbon-12 has uh, six protons in its nucleus and six neutrons because Six plus six, that's 12. That's the mass number, right? So uh, remember this as we go about this chapter. So isotopes, um, there are different kinds of isotopes and a radioactive isotope is also called a radioisotope, is unstable and spontaneously emits energy to form a more stable nucleus. So these types of isotopes are called radioisotopes because they are not stable and they will do uh, have a radioactivity and emit energy and typically a particle as well uh, to form a more stable nucleus. And they go through that because they are unstable to start with. So radioactivity is the nuclear radiation emitted by a radioactive isotope. And as you can see here, uh, only the nucleus is represented here for the radioactive atom. So you see how we have neutrons and protons. And so um, when a radioactive um, isotope um, you know, um, um, is not stable and uh, emits energy, emits a radiation, it's both in the form of energy and particle. But we will also learn about radiations that are only made of energy, like the gamma um, radiations. But most uh, radioactive uh, radiations are uh, emitting particles and a lot of energy. And it's only involving the nucleus of the atom, right? So it changes the nucleus of the atom. And that's why in these reactions, the um, identity of the element changes because its nucleus changes. 
So of all the uh, known naturally occurring isotopes, uh, 264 are stable and 300 are unstable. So more than half are not stable of all the naturally occurring isotopes. And an even larger number of radioactive isotopes called artificial isotopes have been produced in the laboratory. So we even made uh, even more uh, radioactive isotopes in the laboratory. So there is a lot of unstable radioactive uh, isotopes. Um, carbon, uh, carbon, for example, the element carbon has uh, three naturally occurring isotopes. So that means when you find a sample of carbon in nature, it will be made of three um, isotopes, the carbon 12, the carbon 13, and carbon 14. Uh, carbon 12, um, as we saw, has six neutrons and six protons in its nucleus. Carbon-13 has six protons and seven neutrons in its nucleus. So uh, remember how uh, isotopes keep the same number of protons. It's only the number of neutrons that changes. And so carbon-14 has six protons still and eight neutrons. Six plus eight is 14, so that's why it's carbon-14. So these are the three um, naturally occurring isotopes for carbon. When you find a sample in nature, you find those three isotopes. But only two of these are stable, the carbon-12 and carbon-13. Carbon-12 uh, is found uh, to be abundant at 98.9%. So out of 100 atoms of carbon you find, 98.9 uh, are carbon-12, and then 1.1 percent is carbon-13, and then a, a trace amount of 0.0001 percent, so even less than that, uh, is made of carbon-14, and it's very unstable, and it's radioactive. And that's uh, what is used, actually, to date archae archaeological uh, samples. It, when you find um, uh, archaeological samples, you can um, um, measure the amount of radioactivity in the uh, sample, and that will uh, allow you to date the sample this way, using you know, the life of the carbon-14. So um, these are naturally occurring isotopes. And as we said, there are even more isotopes created in the laboratory. So um, what are the types of radiation? So there are four types of radiation, the alpha particles, the beta particles, the positrons, and the gamma radiations. Um, let's start with the uh, alpha particles. An alpha particle, so it's represented with the uh, Greek letter alpha. It's a high energy particle that contains two protons and two neutrons. Alpha particles are the nucleus of a helium isotope. So it has a plus two charge and a mass number of four. So if we look at the symbol given for alpha particles, it's either alpha, the Greek letter, or uh, the um, element symbol helium with a mass number of four and a charge of plus two. So the four is written in the upper left corner, like a mass number, and the two is the charge in the lower left of the symbol helium. But it's not an helium uh, element, it's, it's helium nucleus only. There is no electrons around the nucleus of that alpha particle. So um, mass number is four because you have two protons and two neutrons, and the charge is positive two. So these are high energy particles, alpha particles. Um, the beta particles are also high energy um, radiations and they are high energy electrons. So it has a negative one charge like an electron and a negligible mass uh, like an electron. Um, and remember how an electron is almost has almost no mass because it's a mass of uh, um, 2,000 times less than a proton, right? 
So the beta particles are represented by the Greek letter beta or the um, letter lowercase letter e with the mass number of zero because there is no mass compared to a proton and a negative charge uh, of one in the lower left corner. So it really is like an electron, but it's an electron with a lot of energy, right? It's a high energy electron. A beta particle is formed when a neutron is converted to a proton and an electron. So if you uh, split a, a neutron and make a proton out of it, you get also a beta particle. So if you look at the neutron, it has a mass number of one and uh, it's neutral, right? So that's why the lower left uh, number is zero. And then if you split it into a proton and an electron, you get the proton with a mass number of one. So all the mass is kept from the neutron to the proton. And the proton now has a positive charge of one. So that's why the lower left number is one. And then we have a beta particle to compensate for that uh, positive charge because the beta particle has a negative charge. So positive charge from the proton plus the negative charge from the uh, beta particle make uh, um, overall a, a, negat um, a neutral um, um, a group, if you will. Together, it's neutral, just like the neutron was. And then the beta particle has no mass. And that's why now no mass plus a mass of one from the proton gives a mass of one, a mass number of one for the neutron. So um, the, the, the reason why I say this is because the these uh, type of um, uh, equations should be balanced. The mass numbers should be balanced and the lower left numbers here for the charge should be balanced from uh, the left side of the arrow to the right side. So uh, you get a beta particle when you split a, proton, a neutron into a proton and an electron. Um, now the positron. A positron is called an anti-particle of a beta particle. It, um, why? Because it's like the opposite um, in charge. Their charge are opposite, but their masses are the same, which is effectively zero. Remember how an electron has a mass of zero or a beta particle here, which is a high energy electron. They have no mass. So the positron has no mass as well. But the positron as the name says it is a positive electron. You can see it as a positive electron. Um, it has a charge of plus one. And so the um, symbols for the positrons are beta plus or the lowercase letter E with a mass number of zero and a plus one charge uh, on the lower left corner. This time we place a plus really to make the difference between the beta particle and the positron here. A positron is formed when a proton is converted to a neutron. So when a proton is converted to a neutron, you get a positron with the neutron. So let's look at the mass numbers. The mass number of the proton is one and the mass number of the neutron is one. So the mass is kept from the proton to the neutron. The lower left uh, number is one for a proton. So it's a charge of plus one. And on the right side of the arrow, the neutron now is neutral. So it's a zero because it's neutral. And it's the positron now that has the positive charge of plus one. And the positron has no mass. So the mass number is zero. And you can see that if you do the total of the neutron plus the positron, their mass number is one plus zero and it's one, which corresponds to the one of the proton. And the charges are zero and plus one. And so that's a total of a positive charge one, which is what we have on the proton. So this is um, balanced, if you will. So a positron is formed when a proton is converted to a neutron. And finally, the uh, gamma rays, so we call, we call them rays. Uh, they are high energy radiations. 
uh, and they are released from a radioactive nucleus. Uh, they are a form of energy, so there is no mass or no charges. So the symbol is just gamma, like the Greek letter gamma. There is no um, mass number or charge on this uh, gamma. It's a ray, it's a, a high energy um, radiation. So there is no particle in this case. All right, so this table summarizes the different types of radiation from the different types of particles or we have. The alpha particle, symbol alpha or helium 4, 2 with a mass number of four and a charge of plus two. The beta particle is the um, high energy electron. So beta or um, the E for electron with the mass number of zero and a charge of negative one, like an electron. The positron is the beta plus uh, particle. Uh, so it's the opposite of an electron, so it's a um, lowercase e with a mass number of zero and a charge of plus one. And then uh, the gamma rays, which are just represented by gamma, there is no mass number, no charge. It's just a high energy uh, radiation. So that ends the first section of uh, chapter 10.